Morning, guys. Um, can I just say I'm very surprised. Thank you for taking the poll. Um, I was a little bit worried because academic development was ahead in the poll for a very long time, but directing one at the end. So we're going to revise one of your favorite lectures, which is the Teasmate lecture for the dramatic units and identifying beats. Um, should we just give it a minute? Actually, no, let's just get going. So this is part of dramaturgy, as you know, right? The theory and practice of, where's my focus? Theory and practice of dramatic composition. So this is often a watershed moment for a lot of directors when we do this. Um, I don't know if it was for you, but I hope it was. Okay, so um, when we think about a movie, right, it's all about progression and it's about how things change. If the movie stays the same as it was in the beginning as it was in the end, you've heard me say this many times, it's not really very, it's not a dr very interesting movie. Your film is composed of different scenes, right, which you know, and of those scenes, a single scene can be a dramatic unit, or a scene can have more than one dramatic unit, right? Dramatic unit. And those dramatic units are built up of beats, right? And what these beats are, are mounting pressures that lead to irreversible change, right? So this happens, then that happens, then that happens, and that is a moment of change that your character cannot go back from. He's learned information he can't undo, he's sustained a wound that he can't heal, um, something like that. So it's a moment where your character has changed forever, therefore his tactic in the story needs to change, or his approach in the story needs to change. So... Um, the, the key component of the dramatic unit is the beat. Um, it's often widely misunderstood because we use beat for so many things. If you read a script and you see the word beat, you think you mean a pause. If you listen to music or um, dancing or you know stage acting, a beat can often be um, have to do with rhythm, you know. Um, but in directing of Beats are these little moments of increasing pressure. So for the rest of the lecture, see it that way. That when we talk about a beat, we mean a moment that builds up and builds up, builds up to a bigger moment, which then causes change in the character, right? A beat is a moment of changed awareness in one of the characters. It can be in one of the character. It can be in both of the characters. Um, often... It's one character asserting his will over another, so that moment of change happens in generally in one character or one team, right? It's also a fulcrum point, right? It's a moment where a character has two choices to make, two or three choices to make, and the choice he makes depends on the type of character he is, right? So if you have a timid person and they reach a fulcrum point, so this moment of, moment of pressure, they'll decide... Um, to choose the timid solution, the easy solution. If you have someone like um, Leonidas in 300, who is a battle-hardened warrior, he'll, he, in a fulcrum moment where he has choices between war and peace, he'll always go to war, right? Because that speaks to the character that he is. So, um, yeah, lots of students, when we go through this for the first time, they find it really, really useful, really enlightening, and it really helps you tell a story. Because if you think about your film this way, it stops you from thinking about the generic ways of telling a story. Because generally what we see in first-year movies is that all the characters are the same character. They make the same choices, they do the same things. There's no, there's no dramatic tension between them because it's basically just the same person just their binaries of a personality. It's not a different character. So 
in Ravage's book, Directing Aesthetics and Techniques, he speaks about the beat and the dramatic unit and he uses the example of the uh, Goblin Tease Maid, which is, I know, Ross's favorite. So this is what the Tease Maid looks like. Right, got you a picture. There are many pictures on Google Images. This is a proposed one for your Android phone that you control from your Android phone. I wish they would make that. There's one with a little nightlight on. So let's see if I can draw this properly. Um, so we're going to use Rabinger's Tease Made analogy. Right? So the Tease Made is a device or an invention or a gadget often found in British bed and breakfasts. Mr. Wilby actually has one, which is a, a wonder to behold. I'll post some photos a little bit later if you guys want to see it. I think I have sent them on the group before, right? But how it works is it's got a clock, which you set. And on this side, it has a pot. And on this side, it has a, a, it has a tea, it can have a mug or it can have a teapot or whatever. And then there's a pipe over here. And then there's a, a plate over here. And... If I remember correctly, you set a timer. Ten minutes before the timer goes off, this heats up. It boils the water with the tea bag in here. Boils the water with the tea bag, and then it, the pressure from the boiling pushes the tea up this pipe, and it lands in your cup. And then the alarm goes off at 7 a.m. or whenever you decided to get up, and then you have a fresh cup of tea. So this is. The analogy Rabinger uses to describe beats in a dramatic unit. So the dramatic unit is the change T. It is now that I don't have boiling water, I have tea, right? And the dramatic units are the steps of the teas made as they changed water into tea, right? So I'm going to go through what happens. Is number one, before bed, there's a metal canister that you fill with water, right? When you make your tea, you put the tea back in. Put the tea bag. Um, so you put the tea bag into. There's a metal canister you put the water into, and you put the tea bag into your tea cup, right? And you place them side by side, as I showed you in the picture, and then you set your alarm. Set alarm. Okay, so that's step number one. Now step number two is. At the hour that you set it, so 7 a.m., because we're all in isolation, so you can get up nice and late. The clock silently turns on the heater, so the heater turns on, so heat starts to be emitted from the heater. Heater on, right? Um, initial rumbles start to stir, initial rumbles as the water starts to heat up. Rumbles. Oh. Um, soon turning into hissing. As the water starts pushing to a boil, hissing to boil, right? So that is step one and two. Step number three is steam. Because the water is boiling, it's releasing steam. Steam causes the water to decant into from the metal canister into the tea mug or your teacup, right? The weight of shifting from the metal canister because the water is leaving the metal canister from one vessel to another right causes the heating platform that it's on to shift right that turns off the current and the boiling water starts brewing tea right and then Step number four, the storm subsides. You get out under your duvet and you enjoy your tea. Enjoy tea. So, if you look at our example, it is not, the dramatic beat is not when the current switches on. It's not when the water heats up. 
it's these are building pressures, right? So things that happen to your character are building pressures. So what would the fulcrum, well, a T can't have fulcrum, but what would be the moment of irreversible change in these three steps? Right? So for a character, or for your cup of tea in this example, it would be number three. Okay, because it's a moment of irreversible change. I can turn water into tea. I can't turn my tea back into water. Right? Does that make sense? It's when the weight has shifted from the decanter into the tea. It's now tea. And now I can't make water out of it again. Can't squeeze toothpaste back into its jar. And then item four is what you would call in the dramatic unit your resolution moment or your falling action right so that is the tease made example of what a dramatic unit looks like when we break it down into beats okay so go do yourself a favor go read about the history of the tease made as a fascinating little invention and as you can see also quite useful for trying to explain this. So let me clean that quickly. Okay, so our dramatic unit within a scene, so again, a dramatic unit can be an entire scene or it can be part of a scene, right? Happens because each character within your film right, and this is very useful to understand, has an agenda. Now, what does, when first years get to the point where they realize that, hey, me making a film is not me just spouting orders, not me just getting my way, but me as a director, I am the bridge between the story and other people's talents and abilities, right? So your production designer has a set of talents that he's really good at. He understands how to build a set. He understands how to dress a set for a camera. Your cinematographer understands how movement elevates a story. Your costume designer understands how the costume elevates the character. And you as the director take all those people's inputs and you guide it towards the potential of what the story is, the unified vision of the idea of the story, right? So your story starts out at one place, and as these agendas cause rising pressures and moments of irreversible change, that pushes the story engine forward to help you tell the story, right? So what, is, what does a director do? Quite simply, a director directs change, right? Every change that happens, or every one of these beats, is a moment for your character to, for your director to take advantage of the story changing. So now, because the exposition happens, I set my stage in a certain way. Then there's an inciting incident, so a character pulls out a gun. Now I can guide that performance. Now I can guide the costume and prop designer. I want this type of gun. I want the character to, the performance to be in this type of way. I want the lighting to be that sort of way. Then there's a complication. Now that's another opportunity. That's another change. So now the director can come in as well and go like, okay, so now the gun misfired and the spring pops out, right? It's very elaborate and comical almost. That's a directorial decision. So now the lighting changes to become a lot brighter. That's my next directorial decision. Now that I want a close-up and the character's eyes must pop out of his head. That's, so I'm deciding to direct it in a comedic style where you can easily take those changes and direct them in a more dramatic style. So he pulls out a gun. It's not a normal gun. It's a AR-15. So it's a military-issue rifle. It is very serious. The complication is the gun still misfires, right? But instead of the, the person with the gun looking comical, he now looks even more angry and frustrated, right? So I want the lighting to be even more dim. I want the focus to be on his eyes. I want the performance to be very intense. So this is the same moment. But using these little moments of change, we can now direct it in different ways. 
So speaking of this example where we have two characters, um, one that pulls out a gun, right? A dramatic scene, right? Every dramatic unit revolves around an agenda or character wants. Every character in the scene has to have, has to want something. If they don't want something, right? You can't direct it. So even if a character just wants someone to shut up, or just want someone to not be angry, or just want someone to calm down, right? Which are passive, passive wants. That is still him wanting something. He's not going to engage. He's not going to escalate the the conflict because his want is for the conflict to end. Another character might, for example, want the conflict to escalate so it can get to a point where he might achieve his goal. He wants the gun. So he'll step forward. He'll grab it, right? The other person who has a passive want, he just wants it to go away, might put his hands up. He might do whatever the, the, the guy with the gun says, right? So to start understanding a dramatic unit, you also need to stand, understand the character's agenda because how they fulfill their wants within the agenda is dependent on their wants. Sorry. How the character acts within the dramatic unit is dependent on what they want, right? So, if you think about a want, how do you identify a want? Is just what does the character want to accomplish? What does he want to get, or what does he want to do? Right? A goal. Uh, uh, so you get a goal, accomplishment. Basically, all the same thing. It's something you want, right? Want is the best way to put it. So the problem emerges because of that want. A problem emerges. So that's the character's problem, right? And that problem has to be solved. So that problem then causes the character to come up with a strategy to achieve the thing that he wants to get. Does that make sense? So. Let's look at the dramatic unit, which is probably one of the fundamental things of directing that you need to understand if you want to direct anything, right? I'll just put it over here. It's that we've got the scale. In the scale, we have intensity. And time. Now, film is a temporal art form, right? It moves over amount of time. And it also has the performances and the cinematography and the production design has intensity. Intensity can also be equated to conflict. So in cinematography, we would speak about visual conflict or visual contrast. The more contrast, the more conflict a scene seems to have, right? So this is our scene. Our scene is three minutes long say give or take which is quite a long scene and our intensity goes from zero to ten okay so a scene never starts at zero unless the character is sleeping but that's very amateurish please don't do that or if you do you know do it for a purpose try and avoid it as much as possible um so say we start at our scene at number one two three four five six seven Eight, nine. Okay, we start at about a two. So two people walk into a bar, right? We can see it's a CD bar. This is our exposition. So we can see it's a dodgy bar. It's quite CD. It's got rough looking guys in it, right? And um, the bartender doesn't look too friendly either. So that's our exposition. The lighting is quite very atmospheric. Uh, it's very smoky in there. Um, you can tell by the look of the place. It's, you know, it's a rough and tumble biker bar. Okay? So that's our exposition. That's my first, first thing that I'm directing is how the scene opens. How does it look? Now, this has to do with blocking. This has to do with staging. has to do with lighting, composition, uh, performances, all of that are established in your expositional moment, right? Then the intensity goes up because now the guy's, oh, shit, I am in a biker bar, so the intensity of performance needs to go up. So they're very tense. Um, they're edgy, you know, because 
they can feel something is about to go wrong. So the intensity goes up. Then they go stand at the bar, and now we have an inciting moment, right? They are there to get information from the bartender. They ask the bartender about that information because that's their goal or their want is to get information. That's why they're in this bar. Um, the bar tells, bartender politely tells them that he's not going to give them the information. There's two of them. Okay, one is a very polite character, a good cop. The other one's a bad cop. The bad cop pulls out a, well, shows the bartender his gun, right? Which is the complication. So the inciting incident was asking for the information. The bartender says no, right? We have rising action as the two cops try and get the information out of him. Then the one, the bad cop says, nope, I've got a gun. You're going to give me the, comp the, the information. So that is a complication. Right now, he's provoked the bartender with violence. Right, um, the bartender pulls out a shotgun, and as he pulls out a shotgun, the rest of the bar also pulls out weapons. So you can see the intensity rising up into almost a ten. Right, this whole, all of this together is called the rising action. Right, this is where it intensifies. Right, and then at the top of it, someone pulls the trigger and everybody in the bar starts shooting and ducking for cover that is the climax right um finally they get to the bartender in the climax and the and the bartender says okay okay if you stop shooting i'll give you the information right so now the tension is relieved right and we fall off the tension never goes back to a two it falls off to about a five right halfway from where it was right and we reach the resolution so we got our want, or we didn't get our want, but something changed. So we now have, one change could be the bartender refuses to give us the information, so we now have to come up with a new strategy. That is a change. Or the bartender did give us the information, and we now have to go on to the next step to resolve our want, right? So that could also be a resolution. This is called the falling action, this whole section where the tension... Um, starts to drop towards the resolution all of this i would argue is resolution right because resolution is not just a thing that happens resolution is a progressive moment when you resolve an issue it's not just oh okay well now i'm over it right there's a whole dropping of emotions and things that happen right so the inciting incident if you go through it again we've got exposition where we set up the world the inciting incident is it initiates a new issue right that was the bad cop showing the gun complications is where the pressure starts to rise right um that's where the the bartender was like oh well not gonna happen and then we get all these are beats and then we get to where we get the information which culminates on a moment of irreversible change and then we keep on from there right and then the characters are now different so they're once have changed right so the outcome the abstract meaning of this unit a whole scene or a complete drama is is the outcome what changed so the next scene is dependent on this this is dependent on the scene that became for it before it and this now influences the scene that comes after it right does that make sense very useful, very useful to think about. So now that we understand the dramatic unit, right? Um, before I go on, does everybody understand the dramatic unit? Let me take a sip of my coffee and you tell me quick. Is there any questions about the dramatic unit before I go on what that should evoke in your mind? As a director, how am I going to clean this? Eden questions, Megan questions, Donovan questions, Shaheen, Ross, any questions? Megan says she's fine. I know I've drilled this into a lot of you. 
but it is probably one of the most important directing lessons. Everything else is very much dependent on your understanding of these moments of irreversible change, right? Very important um, parts of the story engine. Okay, so when you've come to this point, right, and you're interrogating your film, The dramatic unit and the dramaturgy and the drama of your story should make you ask certain questions that move along the line of... There's Milani. Thank you, Milani. That move along the line of our tease made example. So, drama is seeing special people in special situations, according to Phil and George, right? There are four sort of that you can work in and each of them should pose a question right the first unit when you're looking at your script you try and understand it as best as you can so that you can direct it according to these dramatic units is what establishes that well sorry let, let, let's, let me just think about this so if we break it into four units like Ortiz made example right unit one establishes what right unit one should establish the problem right and uh, so unit one's the exposition in that exposition it should establish the problem that should make you ask two questions how will my characters solve this problem right and will they will are they up to the task so unit t two should deal with how to answer this question how are they going to adapt to this these new circumstances right this comes after our exposition and the question that the audience will ask themselves in this second unit is what will these characters do right that is the sort of tension that drives the story and keeps it interesting then unit three should be does the character have what he needs in himself or as a tool to achieve this goal? So think about the gun. And then unit four has to do with the resolution, right? And the question should be, what will happen next? The audience should ask himself, what will happen next? If they ask themselves that question, they will want to watch the next part of the story. They will want to watch the next scene, right? So these are questions you can ask yourself to interrogate a scene in a very basic way, right? So when you interrogate your scene, ask yourselves the following questions, okay? So let me get to this. Who are the characters that I'm working with? Who are my characters? Right? And then, are they timid? Are they action characters? Are they dramatic characters? Are they comedic characters? What are they? Right? Then you ask yourself, what is my character's agenda? So, one is characters, who are they? Next one is, what do they want? Right? So, if you understand what your characters want, you'll understand how they'll act. Then, the third thing you ask yourself when you read a script and you're trying to identify beats is, what is the problem? Right? What issue are my characters dealing with, right? So in our example on our dramatic unit is we had two cops that needed to get information. The next question you ask yourself is what is the conflict, right? So the conflict was they need to get information. The bartender doesn't want to give him, them the information. That's the conflict in our example. But if you find a script and you can't identify the conflict, you have a massive issue, right? It is very easy to understand characters. It's very easy to understand their wants. If there's a problem and there's not a conflict, there's a big issue with the scene. The next thing, because that, that is almost impossible, but I have seen it. So complicating, complicating factors is the next thing you should worry about is how is my conflict escalated by complicating factors 
So the conflict was they go to the bartender, the complicating factor is the bartender refuses to give them the information, right? And then within this, what are the beats? Now that I have these things, can I break them down into beats, right? What is the confrontation? So there's going to be a confrontation in some sort of way, right? It's usually between characters, right? In, in Indiana Jones... Yeah, yes, Ross, thank you. Thank you, Josh. When you read a script or you're just trying to analyze a scene, even if you only have a concept, um, you can try and see if you can identify these things, right? Generally, if you have a completed script, these things need to be in here for you to direct a scene to its full potential. And these are almost the minimum things that you need, right? For a scene to be engaging to an audience. So thank you for that question, Ross. Um, does anybody else have a question? I'm going to keep going, but just interrupt me if you have a question and just ask whenever. So what is the confrontation, right? The confrontation is when they start shooting at each other, in our example. But the confrontation can also be when one character confronts the other um, for whatever reason. Then we have, after that, it has to come to a resolution. The resolution is not always final, but it is into that confrontation, right? So if you lose a confrontation, you would change your strategy so that you attack it differently the next time. Einstein said, if you have a problem and you try and apply the same solution a million times, that is the definition of yada, yada, yada. Go look it up. Okay. And then you can also ask yourself, how many dramatic units does my scene have? So this is us looking at a script and trying to find, understand our scenes. Remember I said a scene can have, at the beginning of the lecture, we said a scene can have one dramatic unit or it could have many dramatic units. So how many dramatic units does my scene have? Right? And for each one of those dramatic units within your scene, you would then go back to your chart and you would fill out your dramatic unit and find out where these moments beats are that lead to a moment of change, right? Because as a director, all you're doing is you're directing change. You can't direct things that stay the same, right? Every change is an opportunity for you to tell, a, tell your story. When someone pulls a gun, it's an opportunity to change the performance, adapt the lighting, change the blocking, change the costume. It might get ripped up. Die Hard is a wonderful example of, um, of change. In 80s movies, they have this, um, they have this, this thing of where some, so, something goes wrong and then there's a solution and that thing goes wrong and there's a solution. That thing goes wrong, then there's a solution. So it's a, it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful movie to look at if you want to practice identifying these beats. So Die Hard, I definitely recommend if you want to just practice doing this. Die Hard's a fun movie, watch it, and then try and break down each dramatic unit. Because each scene in Die Hard has two or three dramatic units in it easily. Because it's an action movie, constantly needs to keep moving, things constantly need to happen. Okay, so that's going to be it for today. I know a lot of you wanted the academic development um, lecture was a very close second to this. It just just didn't didn't get the votes. So I'll do that one soon. And then the, the next directing lecture I'll do with you is about how do we fit these dramatic units that we've done today into the dramatic arc of a film. Um, which isn't that complicated, right? But it is very useful. It's also a very short lecture, but it is very useful just to understand how these smaller units fit into its bigger structure. Okay, are there any questions? This surprisingly has been half of the time the other lectures have been. I'm actually quite glad for that. Do you guys want another example? Do you have a question you want to ask? Megan says thank you. It's a pleasure, Megan.
Was this useful, guys? Can you kind of see what it's for? Can you see how you can use it is more important. So next time you read a script, right, and you don't know how to direct it, you don't know where these, remember that a director just directs change. And what you're going to do is you're going to find out who your characters are, right? What type of character are they? You get the, you get the character archetypes. You're going to find out what their wants are. What do they want, right? Do a watch, watch a procedural drama like CSI or um, Law and Order. They're very much by the book when it comes to the dramatic unit. You're going to look at what the problem or the issue is, what is standing in the way of getting this want. You're going to see how that leads to a conflict, right? How that conflict escalates by complicating factors, right? You're going to take all of that information. You're going to break it down into beats of a dramatic unit, right? You're going to look at the confrontation, which is the rising action. And then you're going to look at the resolution, which is the falling action, right? And then when you've done that, you're going to see... You're going to try, you're going to do it over and over again and try and see how many dramatic units are within your one scene, right? And if you do that, you have the information that you need to direct it. Okay. So guys, I hope that is useful. Thank you very much. I hope everybody's staying Corona free and everybody's still okay. If you guys have any questions, you're welcome to send me a message or email me. Um, I'll do the academic development lecture very soon, and then I'll do the um, dramatic arc lecture as soon as I can, as well. Okay. So, guys, thank you very, thank you very much again. Um, lecture is online for the rest of the day. If you want to go through it again, or if you, I know the CCOM line is down. A lot of you have been complaining about it. Um, so, just if you need to get it, it'll be on my instagram for the rest of the day thank you guys see you later drive safe or well, actually don't drive safe stay at home